Hello, it's the beginning of my weekend and I don't have anything major planned, just some little fun, mellow things, some relaxing things, some silly things. So I thought I'd take you along with me for as much of it as possible. Good morning, happy Friday. So I'm still here in my robe, I just had my shower and the first thing I'm going to do not the first thing in my day, but the first thing I'm gonna do in terms of eating or drinking is have this glass of water with B12 drops in it. I'm liking the way the light is catching on the surface of the water and on the glass. Little things make me happy. Something that makes me not so happy is how streaky the glass is, but that's just life without a dishwasher, you know? I have to hand dry everything. It's a very exciting time. Relax. This is what I had for breakfast this morning. Just a jar of overnight oats with some almond milk and cinnamon. And I gobbled them up. My skin is looking so much better. There are a few little marks that need to clear up here and there, but very few new comedones forming. And it used to be really bad up here and on my cheeks and a little bit on my jaw. So, um, yeah, I think that the regimen that I've been sticking to for a few weeks now is paying off. So the time has come to re-dye my eyebrows, so I'm going to do that today. This is the kit that I use, and then I bought this little mixing glass separately. I have some powder inside. Now, lately when I've been doing my eyebrows, I think they've changed their formula, so the developer is a lot runnier, so I'm going to try to use a lot less. Just about this much for one capsule. Okay, it's time for a moment of bathroom honesty. Now, let me be honest with you all. If your toilet is dirty, that's a deal breaker for me. Not even talking romantically, maybe even just like as friends. <laughs> I'm kidding, but um, yeah. Uh, one perk of having OCD is an immaculate toilet all the time. Okay, I'm gonna really prove myself right now. This is a baby wipe. I'm gonna go underneath, really truly. That's what it should be like. Just saying, okay? Just saying. Also, of course, always worth saying, OCD does not mean cleanliness. Cleanliness does not mean OCD. There's more to OCD than that, but for some people with OCD, their subtypes can include um, intense cleanliness. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to wrap up my spiel now. You probably already knew all this, but if you didn't, you have not cleaned your toilet effectively if you've not cleaned all around it as well, because... I'm just saying, toilet water and urine, they can get places you don't expect, so I clean all around this trash can here, and all down the sides, all the floor around it, everything. Everything. The first thing I need to do is pick up some items I got framed at Michael's. I had a little coupon for 70% off, and I ran right over and used it about two weeks ago. So today's the day I get to go pick up my items. Yes, I am wearing bloomers. Thanks for asking. Okay, I picked up my frames. They came in this brown paper wrapping. So yeah, I'm excited to get them home and put them up on the mantle. It's funny because when I went in to pick them up, the person behind the counter unwrapped them to let me take a look before I took them home. You know, he works for the framing company. You know, they have their own little counter inside the Michaels. And there was some schmutz on one of the frames and he went to the back to clean it up and apparently it gave him a little trouble. And I think he was a little defensive about it because 
he came out and he was like, oh, this, this kind of frame, good luck with it. You know, it's nothing but trouble. It smudges super easily. You know, it scratches super easily. And I didn't really know what to say because no mention of these issues was made to me when I picked out the frames, when I paid for the frames, when I waited two weeks for the frames. So I was like, okay. <laughs> It's so, so nice sitting here in the car. I almost don't want to drive home. I'm oddly, extremely relaxed sitting where I've parked up here. Um, it was a really sunny day. It's cooled down. It's about 5 p.m. There's a little bit of a breeze and it just feels really peaceful for 5 p.m. on a weekday. Just where I happen to be. I didn't just pick up the frames. I also got myself just a small bag of groceries while I was out. My favorite kind of pasta. And most exciting of all, as well as, wow, giant crow just landed. Whoops. You ever accidentally just end up part of a murder? can't escape these, <laughs> these little dudes. He's enjoying the breeze too. He's listening to the people getting out of their car below. It's super interesting. That's right. So one of them, I guess, just let all the others know the coast was clear. They were waiting to eat this spilled bit of food on the ground. And I guess those were the lookouts. And now they've invited the rest because honestly, they did a different kind of call and then all these other crows descended. Oh, territorial. Super interesting. I love trying to figure out birds, social rules, you know? Meanwhile, the one on the right up there never left his post. It's really interesting. I once saw a prairie dog relieve another prairie dog of its watch duty. Like they, they watch in shifts and it was incredible. <laughs> I'll never forget. It was just special to see into the worlds of animals, you know. So here I am, thinking I can escape the crow sounds, film somewhere else, but they're here with me. So anyway, I was trying to show you the different things I got at the grocery while I've been out and about. Just a small bag. I got um, more of my favorite kind of pasta. Favorite, favorite. Store-bought, you know. Um, I don't know why I just did that. And most exciting of all, I found organic cherries. They're not always available. So cherries are my favorite fruit and they're only around one season a year. They're very much a summer fruit. And even then, even when I can find them, I can't always find organic. And if I'm gonna buy cherries, I'm gonna buy them organic because cherries are prone to pesticide residue. But cherries are already expensive and even more so if you buy organic. So then it comes down to whether or not I can justify spending $8 a bag. Um, but a few times a year I will treat myself and I will just gorge myself on cherries. Um, the organic ones are harder to come by. Like, you'll see them everywhere this time of year, but for some reason it's harder to find organic bags. I didn't always care about organic or buying organic, but after I worked for a while doing shopping, like grocery shopping and food prep and in-home cooking for a family, I started looking into what should be bought organic and what shouldn't and the research behind all of it and um, it changed the way I thought about these things. So yeah, it's about that time. Time to make my way home and have my evening. So I'm gonna hit the road. Really enjoyed the drive over here because, you know, it was a nice clear day and I got to listen to my music, but I think I'm gonna be sitting in some 5 p.m. traffic now, so may not be quite as much fun. I just wanted to show you the items I got framed. Here's the first one, and the floor is going to creak a lot. It always does. Oh, wow. Anytime I say it's going to, it doesn't. And here's the other one. 
Isn't that so beautiful? I love them, my little bugs up on our faux mantle. I'm really happy with them. So as you can probably tell, they're dimensional, at least this one is. So it couldn't have glass over it, and I wanted them to match, so neither of them has glass. As much as I would like that protection, it just didn't work out. I could have put them in a deeper sort of shadow box arrangement, but I thought you wouldn't be able to see them as well anymore if they were inside a kind of case. So this one's got little pomegranates. Really beautiful. I'm home now and it is snack o'clock, precisely. I'm gonna try this new flavor of bean fields, at least it's new to me, and I'm super excited because it's spicy queso and I love all things spicy. Now I know what you may be thinking. Beanfields, isn't that that brand of chips that makes their chips out of beans? Bingo, you got it. But if you're worried that it will cause me some sort of discomfort, if you're worried about me, if you're worried that this bag of chips made out of beans is gonna hurt my stomach, rest assured I grew up eating refried beans by the can. So I don't know if my body is just particularly good at processing beans by this point or if I just have a resilient stomach to start with but something like this is not going to give me bloating, gas, or discomfort but it may not be the right thing for you. I've heard horror stories. I've heard people say that bean fields ruined their day so just a warning. So there you have it. One of the few benefits of having grown up a latchkey kid and made myself lots of meals out of cans, bags, boxes. <laughs> I can eat things like this now. Sorry, I keep moving back and forth. I've been pacing. I'm trying something new as a lip balm. Just got this in the mail. I'm super excited. This company uses strawberries and rose for this particular tint. And the packaging is cardboard. I use way too many paper towels and one day I'm drinking my matcha out of a mason jar. The next day I'm going to Starbucks and getting getting something in a plastic cup. So yeah, my progress is imperfect, but I'm always excited when I can swap something out in my routine. I've got to use my other hand to pull this. There we go. Swap something out for something friendlier to the environment. Ooh. So there's the color. So we'll see. I'd like to layer like an SPF lip balm over this and see how that looks. There's a little preliminary swatch. I need to try to get a little more product out of it. It's not a twist up because again, I think it's avoiding those plastic components. So I need to figure out how to push the product up because at this point it's flush with the rim, you know, the edge. But yeah, so there's that. And it smells just like fresh strawberries. It's really lovely. So this recycled pudding jar has some apple cider vinegar in it as well as some dish soap and we're using it currently to catch fruit flies. I know you may be wondering, okay, well, is that vegan? That's a fair question, and I think it's something every vegan needs to reason out for themselves, you know? Veganism is the elimination of practices that exploit animals to the extent that is possible and practicable, you know, exploit and harm. Um, and obviously it's harmful to fruit flies to be caught and drowned in this liquid. So for us, you know, I, I live with someone else and this time of year, even without having food around, you know, we're really on top of not having any fruits or vegetables out. Like there's nothing out there, some chips there, but nothing on top of the fridge. And still the fruit flies reproduce faster than we can, than we can catch them even humanely. So within a day we'll be overrun, you know, we'll have 30 and then each day after that it's exponential. They only live a day or so. Um, so yeah, I feel bad about it. If you have, you know, any suggestions, I'm happy to hear them. You know, if it's a spider or anything like that, I will of course take it outside. So 
yeah, I do have a different policy with mosquitoes because, you know, they do carry a disease. They're the number one killer of humans, you know, as far as animals go in the world. So I do kill mosquitoes and I also kill fruit flies. I don't really want to, you know, unlike with a mosquito, I don't, I don't really need them to die. I just don't know a way to keep them out of the home without killing them. You know, if I had mice, I, I have humane captured mice before and released them into the wild. Never used any traps, you know, because I've, I've had mice. I think they're really sweet, but you know, you don't want them in your home, so. So you do have to figure something else out, and that's a lot easier with something as big as a mouse, so. <laughs> the imagery going along with this is top-notch. I'm just pointing the camera at a jar of dead fruit flies, so there you have it quality content. Don't know if I've shown you my meager candle collection yet, but I also keep my coasters up here. And I have a few geode ones that are really sweet. I don't know if they're geodes or like agate, maybe? And then I've been gifted anthropology candles twice in the last couple years. I don't shop at anthropology, but I'm not complaining because they smell so good. It's cherry time. I'm so excited. I'm a cherry maniac. All stone fruit, really. Oop! Lost one. So let's see how much I can get out of this. I don't even think I should use the little dropper. Yeah, looking inside, I think it's just about done. I don't want to do too much, but oops. I'll save whatever's left for tomorrow. a little on my finger and on the counter. It's okay, it doesn't stain too badly. Time to buy some more. This bird is going wild. There's a massive tree out there. It attracts a lot of boisterous, feathered characters. <laughs> That's so weird, what's wrong with me? He's very impressive with his calls though. Listen for a moment. He's gonna change it up. All right, well, just because I could do this all day doesn't mean you want to, so let's get going with the morning. I'm gonna give these plants a little extra light this morning. I forgot to turn the lamp yesterday, so sticks got a lot of light and these bubbas got almost none. Doing the romper thing again today. That's how you know it's summertime. I don't know why I'm... <laughs> I feel like I'm taking cues, like gesticulation cues from Britney Spears. I love her. I love when she starts a video and she's like, well, the thing is. So now I'm going to do that too because we should all be more like Britney. Do you know what I'm talking about? Britney Spears will start a video like, I love summer or yellow is my favorite color. She really does this kind of gesticulation and I think it's it shows anxiety. I think it's sweet in a way, but I seem to have adopted it because I'm also anxious. Okay, so I'm most of the way through my set Saturday plans. It's about 
2.30 p.m. and I'm going to catch you up on what I've been up to, but first I need to take a peaceful moment with my green tea matcha latte that I just picked up. I'm feeling so sleepy, not sure why, but yeah, I didn't have one yesterday, so I'm treating myself today. <laughs> treating myself to the thing to which I treat myself at least five times a week, but yeah, it always feels extra special if I've gone more than 24 hours without. Okay, so I just got my nails done. New nails. These are they. Very exciting. They're a little shorter than I'd like, but I'm happy with them all around. So then I decided to go to the grocery because yesterday when I went, I was looking for a particular item. I was looking for potato and onion pierogies, one of my favorite easy frozen dinners, and they didn't have them at the location I can usually count on to find them. So I decided to check a different location of the same chain today. And that's why I got cherries yesterday, just on a whim, and also pasta, because when you're as particular about rigatoni as I am, whenever you see the kind you like, you should go ahead and grab it, so I did. But the manicure itself took two hours, because my technician was left to do both my manicure and my pedicure, so I felt sorry for her. It was a lot. They were short-handed, and I told her I was happy to wait, and she said, no, I'll just do them both. Um, but it still took two hours, and that was totally fine, but um, it was just so busy, of course. It's a Saturday in Los Angeles, I get it. Um, you know, it's just still surprising after the last year when things are that busy, and then the grocery store was also packed. Parking was a huge pain. Everything was just super stimulating. Traffic was intense. Everyone was out and about, pedestrians just teeming in the crosswalks. So, yeah, I felt really stimulated, <laughs> overstimulated. So, yeah, not what I'd call an eventful few hours. I was just sitting, getting my nails and toenails done, um, fingernails and toenails, and driving around, looking for parking, and then buying one item in the grocery store. I bought three boxes of the same one item. I really was just doing a pierogi run, as one does when they're obsessed with pierogies. So um, that's going to be my nice, easy dinner tonight. But yeah, I didn't accomplish much in the last few hours, but it's just busy out and hot out and it was noisy. So, so I decided I wasn't quite ready to go home yet. It's still pretty early on a weekend day in the summer, and it's really nice out. A little hot, but in general, really nice. But I just couldn't be in busy areas anymore, so instead of driving home, I just drove to a quiet neighborhood. If you know where to look, there are pretty quiet little enclaves all around Los Angeles. Just a few streets from where it's super busy. You can sit in your car and hear lots of birds chirping and not really hear any traffic noises except when, of course, a car passes right by you. But they're just little side streets, so that only happens every so often as compared to, you know, I live off a more major thoroughfare and it's incessant, you know, when I'm trying to record a video. Decided to change up the filter for a little more visual interest. This one makes all the light come in in reds and yellows and blues. So I think I'm gonna go for a little walk, take a stroll around with my sun hat. Um, I will retrieve from the back of the car. I have a little collection up there just to be safe. But after just a few more moments of enjoying sitting here and listening to all the sounds, and then I think on my walk I'm going to try to collect some leaves and maybe some dry flowers to do a special kind of ASMR video later in the week. But yeah, like I said, it's nice to find these quiet moments. I think some people who don't live in big cities think you can't find peace and quiet like this unless you go out into the kind of suburbs, but you just have to know where to go. But yeah, my brain was fried just about 30 minutes ago. 
I'm feeling much better already. And I'm worrying that this video is going to end up being pretty boring. I'm realizing that my plans for the weekend are, for the most part, things I can't take you along for. You know, I couldn't really make videos when I was getting my nails done. The music in Michael's when I went to pick up the frames, like I thought it'd be nice to show you stickers and wander around looking at things, kind of like southern sounds ASMR, but they were playing the music so loudly, so that wouldn't have worked. Other than that, I don't have any major plans except to clean my apartment, do some more major chores here and there, some household projects and try to get some writing and editing done. That's it. Okay, let's go for a little stroll, shall we? I'm gonna grab my sun hat and we'll do a little walkabout. There's a monarch butterfly, I don't know if you can see it, but it's cruising around, looking for a place to alight. <laughs> it's being extra. Where'd it go? There it is. It's so beautiful. I like this, whatever it is, some sort of massive succulent. Looks like a sea anemone. I've just been following this monarch butterfly around as it makes its path throughout the neighborhood, checking all the flower beds. So this shrub I had in my yard growing up, these are Uranus, this kind of shrub with the yellow and green leaves. That's how nice and peaceful it is on this street. These are the leaves I'm trying to pick up because I think they'll make some really nice crunchy sounds in a video sometime this week. Quite unfortunately, there is a mobile car wash parked on the street now. Like they come to your house and they clean your car from a van that has all this machinery built into it. And that van is very noisy, but that's okay. I got plenty of things from my walk. Fun little doodads for a nice crunchy ASMR video at some point this week. I'm a little dewy from my walk. It's pretty hot. Um, it's a nice time of the year to collect fallen leaves and things because, oddly, you wouldn't expect them to be dropping this time of year, you know? It's not fall, but I don't know how all deciduous trees work, but yeah, there are lots of things falling down and it's terrible for allergies, you know, if you're an allergy sufferer, I'm something of an allergy sufferer, like, I know people who have it way worse, but I can get pretty irritated during seasonal changes, you know, um, periods of upheaval, <laughs> uh, pollen-wise, you know. So, yeah, and I'm assuming there's lots of pollen out and about because I'm seeing lots of pollinators, lots of bees around. So it feels like a weird moment where it's kind of springtime, kind of fall, kind of summer. I don't know. But yeah, at least a few kinds of trees are dropping leaves like crazy, really fun, crunchy ones. I've been enjoying on my walks, stepping on them, so I had the thought, I was like, I should make an ASMR video with these very leaves and some other odds and ends that I can pick up, which I just did. So, we'll hopefully film that in the next few days. I shouldn't stay out too long because I don't have adequate SPF on my arms. I have it on my face and I had a hat on, but didn't want to risk it for my exposed legs and arms. 
So I'm headed back home for a quiet evening of pierogies and editing and maybe some TV. To show you my nails while I'm in the sun. They show up differently in the sun, which I like. Something terrible happened. Bianca's little knob broke off. I have to try to crazy glue it back together. I try not to do too many clips in the kitchen because the refrigerator makes a terrible tinny noise, but I thought you'd all want to know what had befallen Bianca. I know you care. Well, the riveting weekend continues. I just backed up my computer. So let's talk vegan candy. This is a good alternative to a Three Musketeers bar. This one, an alternative to a Butterfinger. This one is like a Milky Way. And these are kind of like peppermint M&Ms. I don't know if there's anything that really compares. And these are kind of like peanut M&Ms. So this is by the company Unreal. This is the company No Way. And then all three of these are from the company Go Max. I haven't made my bed yet today, which is shocking for me, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. If you're wondering why there's a fire extinguisher next to my bed, it's, it's a long story, but essentially some of my power outlets were making a demonic crackling noise, and apparently there's an associated fire risk when your wiring has gotten that old and corroded. So, yeah, we're having an electrician visit tomorrow, and in the meantime, the fire extinguisher sticks with me. I do want to go ahead and acknowledge that it's going to be pretty quick making my bed. I don't really have a good excuse for not making it this morning because the damage is pretty localized to this one area. <laughs> Much better. So I'm realizing I never showed you my pedicure. Earlier, when I was going for a walk, I was still wearing socks because, you know, they put lotion and oil on your feet. So it's kind of risky to wear just sandals and no socks. If you're gonna drive home afterwards, you can slip around inside your shoe. So I take socks with me. Okay, I'm gonna show you, putting aside my apprehensions about showing my feet on the internet. <laughs> okay, sarah, sarah. So I just went for a light pink color, pretty neutral, shimmery. I thought it would grow in nicely. These shoes are pretty banged up, but I love a wooden heel when I can find one. These are the vaunted pierogies. Picked up three boxes. Absolute comfort food, childhood favorite. Before I was vegan, I'd get the Mrs. T brand, but that one uses dairy even in the potato and onion kind. But this brand does not, so this was a major discovery. I hadn't had pierogies in years. So about two years ago, I was able to integrate them back into my regular rotation. Try to get them up from all angles. I'm treating them like they're like a newly released makeup palette or something, but they're just as exciting to me. So here are the pierogies before I boil them.
It's essentially just mashed potatoes in a pasta shell. So you get 12 in a pack and this brand uses a particularly tasty flour. It's extra fancy durum flour. Okay, here it is. One of my favorite simple dinners ever. I know it looks so Spartan, but we all have our comfort foods. This for me is a safe food. So I wait until the pierogies are dry to the touch. They get nice and tacky and then you can kind of dip them like finger food. They're not too messy to just hold. And then for the sauce, it's really simple. It's just low sodium soy sauce with a lot of Tabasco mixed in. Like a lot. It's maybe half and half. My brother made this sauce growing up and he would add sugar and lemon juice and I thought it was the most delicious thing in the world. But I've come to understand about myself that I like it just fine. Whoops. I don't know what that was. But I've come to understand about myself that I like it just fine with just the soy sauce and Tabasco. I'm on an ongoing mission to support small businesses and stop buying everything from Amazon. And even though I have my own methods for heatless curls, I wanted something that would work overnight. Um, those tube-shaped ribbons or the ones that have the kind of foam insert that's somewhat rigid, they don't seem comfortable, and I'm prone to flip-flopping during the night as it is and getting terrible bedhead. So I wanted something soft that would move with me. And bathrobe tie curls seem to turn out really nicely but I don't want to use my actual bathrobe tie because I'm using it most of the time and it's terry cloth. I wanted something more plush, spongier, thicker than a ribbon, so I went with this. I'm excited to try it out. Good morning, it's Sunday. I'm a little bleary-eyed. I'm pretty tired still, but it's time to get up. Um, and I slept with this robe tie in my hair to try to make zero effort curls. It was a lot of effort last night, but zero effort today. So let's go see how that turned out. So if this is your first time seeing me without my big old falsies, <laughs> welcome um, from my natural eyelashes. Um, my eyes are naturally very almond shaped, especially in the morning when they're really puffy. Um, they're not usually this red and irritated though, and my lips aren't always this big. Does anyone else wake up with puffy, swollen lips in the morning? My lower face in general, I wake up and I can feel fluid trapped in my face. Um, I know puffy eyes are normal, I guess it's all normal because that's why we're seeing all those massage techniques Oof. all over the internet for like lymphatic drainage in the face. So yeah, probably not that unique. Well, anyway, good morning. She's sleepy. She's disoriented. She's gonna go drink that B12. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> These are the little baby leaves that just sprouted up in the last few weeks. Not so baby anymore. And we're also seeing some new growth over here. If we take a closer look, another new leaf ready to unfurl. Exciting things happening in the plant department. <laughs> it's funny because I'm saying that figuratively, but this is kind of the plant department of my apartment. This is me making my case. Whoa, where did my face go? <laughs> this is me making my case for dyeing your eyebrows. If you're like me and you have lighter hair because you can wake up in the morning and feel like a ragamuffin, but your eyebrows are still doing their thing. These vegan biotin gummies were a bad purchase. I had been using another kind for a while and I was keeping up with them regularly you know I'd eat the recommended dose every day but they tasted so much better there's just something about the
the texture and taste of these. Yeah, I, I can't get into them. And now I'm stuck with them and I'm determined to finish them off and never buy biotin again because Dr. Dre says it's a scam. <laughs> but yeah, I started taking stuff like this for my eyelashes and my nails and this is the worst kind I've ever tried. The kind I got before this one was so tasty. Like the ones before almost tasted like a strawberry puree and they had a texture to match, a kind of, um, I don't know, not mealy, pulpy texture that was oddly pleasant, like they would dissolve in your mouth really easily. These are tacky and sweaty and just too fake seeming and they leave a weird aftertaste. I just don't like them. Like they're fine, but the other ones tasted like a candy I'd actually reach for and these are a chore to eat. But now I have to treat them essentially like candy now that the illusion has been ruined for me that they do anything for your skin or hair or nails, so. So here again are my overnight curls. This is how I configured everything. So the time has come to take them out and see how they look. So here they are before combing them out. Also, I did not have the energy to put on my makeup today, so I just popped some falsies on top of my naked eyes. Can you tell? I bet you can. It's so funny. Without the eyeliner to kind of integrate it, it's super obvious. Okay, so that worked fine. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a solid good not great, but I'm pretty easy to please when it comes to putting texture in my hair because it always just goes limp anyway. Hello, it's Sunday. You probably, probably already know that. Um, I'm not sure what clips will come before this one because I do sometimes reorder them so they're not chronological if I think I need to mix things up a little. You know, if it's too much of my face at once. Um, because, you know, why not take something inherently simple and fuss and agonize over it to make things harder for myself unnecessarily? always the question. So I heard that by putting powder on top of our sunscreen in order to set it, we may be lifting off some of the product and creating gaps in our SPF coverage. So lately I've been using this mineral powder sunscreen by Tarte to set my sunscreen on light makeup days. So this shirt I bought two years ago in my favorite beach town, the Outer Banks in North Carolina, a lot more <laughs> widely known now that the show has come out. Super comfy, color blocked, a kind of aqua on top, white in the middle, heathered gray on the bottom. And I don't know if you can see, but on the back it says Outer Banks. I've just been weirdly self-withholding about it because I love it so much and it's tied to something sentimental. And I don't know the next time I'll be able to get out there and buy another shirt like this at that shop. So, yeah, but I should wear it because I love it. So, <laughs> it's funny because usually when I avoid wearing something, it's because it doesn't make me feel great or I'm not sure about it. And I just couldn't love this shirt more, but I've gotten a weird bugaboo about it. I'm so excited. This is my first ever Savage Fenty purchase. I bought a whole set for Pride special edition lingerie with rainbows all over it. This is the embroidered unlined demi bra and this is the matching underwear and then a little garter belt. There were some stockings but they were sold out and that's okay. I don't really need them. I can get plain black stockings. So excited. Oh boy, I really wanted this set to work. Not a single item. And I'm doing my work to package this up. Not a single item in the set worked for me. Everything fit in a way that made me feel terrible about my body and in a way that sizing up would not have fixed. Just some weird fit issues and also the quality of the embroidery was not great either. I don't know, I hate waste so I'm going to try to send it back as nicely as I can so that it can get 
sold to someone else or I don't know sold at a discount just hopefully used I hope it can make someone happy so sad I was super excited to have my little pride moment I was gonna wear the whole set in a photo shoot but oh well also, I should not have dirty packages that went through the mail on my bed. What am I thinking? So I'm on my way to get a massage, and I'm so excited. It's my one major out-of-the-house thing that I'm doing today, um, and major is a relative word. Um, it's $40 for an hour. I used to go all the time to help with my foot issues. It's a foot spa that does like body-foot massage combos, um, and I've sorely missed it unintended this past year um yeah so i haven't been able to do that for a year so this is a real treat this is my second one since things opened up again and i'm actually stopping to get myself a matcha latte because i'm so sleepy and i actually don't want to fall asleep during the massage because i've been so looking forward to it i want to like experience it is that weird that seems weird ah <sighs> I'm so, so tired today. I stayed up late to edit and publish a YouTube video, and then I stayed up another hour after that just fucking around. Damn. Okay, I'm going inside now. I am so excited. I've crushed this. Oh, yes. I just realized that <laughs> some of my hair is caught in my seatbelt. I'm a mess today. Holy shit. That was such a good massage. Ooh, he found areas in my arms and in my legs that I didn't even know had so much tension after a year of doing things on my computer and just being a little ball of stress. Wow. So I didn't know that my massage therapist was going to be a man. I forgot, after a year of not going for massages, that I would request um, a woman anytime I went before. Particularly, there was one provider named Gloria and another named Viola. They were both great, but I forgot all about this. Um, usually, it is my preference to get massages from women. Um, it's just an instinctive thing, you know, because they're moving bra straps around and uh, I don't know. It's just what's always felt right for me on an instinctive level. Um, certain parts of a massage, you know, someone's going to be moving their bra straps around and moving your clothes in general, handling you in certain ways. At one point during Thai massages, they get on top of you and move your body. So I've always just had the preference because I tend to tense up more if it's a man doing these things. Real talk. But I didn't plan ahead, didn't request anyone in particular, and today I got a man and it was the best massage I've ever had because um, the level of pressure was what I need. And when I checked out at the end, the person at the front desk seemed a little nervous, like, how was it? And I was like, so good. And she was surprised, and she was like, okay, well, we always have to tell him to, like, tone it down a little, to go a little softer than he expects or thinks he needs to when someone requests, like, soft pressure, medium pressure, hard, he always overshoots. And I was like, no, that was right for me. People see me, they see me as a small delicate person but I like firm touch and I'm a little ball of stress so I need I need someone to really be working those areas so I think it does surprise them you know how much I can handle and the level of pressure I prefer because when I insisted I was like nope that was exactly right for me she just goes damn girl so what is on the docket for the rest of the day I'm gonna go home and do some chores for about an hour and a half, two hours. I need to do my laundry and crucially, I need to fold and put away my clean laundry. I need to do some dishes. I need to bleach the silicone dish mat. And then once everything's put away and the counter is clear, 
I'm going to whiten some of the old grout with a little, not bleach pen, I think it's just a white dye, like a little paint you can use. So I'm going to do that as a little project. And then from there, I'm just going to write a little bit, try to get some writing done, and then relax watching some TV. Maybe you're going to see what Jamie and Claire are up to these days. Not these days, at some point in the past. If you know, you know. Um, so I'm going to eat some dinner and watch some sexy TV. Um, maybe I'll just default to Arrested Development, my favorite or Peaky Blinders, my other favorite. I also want to hang up a painting I framed, the one that was in my car in the last unintentional ASMR video. I didn't go to Michael's to frame that one, I just ordered a frame on Etsy. It was just $30 as compared to like over a hundred. So I'm gonna hang that up and yeah, something else. Oh, I'm the proofreader. I'm supposed to proofread for um, the organization with which I work. I'm their proofreader for tomorrow's event. Um, you know, all the all the written materials that go along with it, they need a proofreader, so that's me tonight. And then tonight, when I'm all cozy in bed, I'm gonna do a little bit of editing before I go to sleep, hopefully at a reasonable hour. I know it's a bad habit to be on your phone in bed when I'm being mindful and good and something I don't do but I'm just super eager to keep up with editing this week. So, and I'm so sleepy. Um, I mean, I'm not now. The massage was really invigorating. So that combined with the matcha, I came out of it feeling super jazzed, but I think I'm gonna crash at some point and I expect I will get through only a few minutes of editing before I fall asleep tonight. It's definitely laundry day. Long over two. <laughs> Look at that sock. Fun, <laughs> if you say so. Good news is I did my bedding already a few days ago. There's some clean laundry I have to fold. If you're ever wondering why it sounds like I live inside an airplane hanger, this is one air filter, two air filters, filters and in the winter we have space heaters on in the summer we have the AC and the bathroom has a built-in air vent to prevent humidity and it's always on anytime the light is on so if you don't like white noise you would not like living here so here's the counter I'm working on you can see the areas where I've been able to do a first coat as opposed to the areas I haven't gotten to yet so this is what the grout looks like after years and years of discoloration. And then over here you can see what it looks like after I've been able to do two coats and let it dry for a few days. I do need to do some touch-ups in a few spots. It's not perfect, but it looks a lot better. So I wanted to give you a peach update really quickly. They're starting to get rosy in some places. You can see at the top of that one. Getting bigger and bigger each day. Also wanted to show you this little cutie. Teeny tiny baby rose. Okay, it's not as if I needed another chore, but These veggies are on the edge. They're threatening to go bad any moment. So I'm going to combine them with this soup that has also been open for a few days and needs to get used up in my slow cooker. Hopefully it'll be nice and fast. Yeah, we've got some spuds. But I think they're still safe. They're not too squishy and they haven't fully sprouted. Gotta be careful with potatoes. Sometimes they can toxify after a certain point. I'm changing approach. I've 
dumped everything into this pot. I figured it'll just be faster because I pushed things too late in the day for a slow cooker. And I'm gonna add some low sodium vegetable broth for a little more liquid. So it made a bit of a mess, but it's all ready to go. Everything has softened and fallen apart and melded together. This tastes so fucking good. You'd think it'd just be like a glorified pasta sauce, but the veggies have kind of held their form and the garlic. Oh my gosh, the garlic tastes like I roasted it. I don't know, I got super lucky. The flavors are so good from all the different aromatics that I'm strongly considering not dumping hot sauce on it, which for me is high praise because I put either sriracha or Tabasco or some sauce like that on everything. I also want to name that this looks like a very small amount of food and that's because it is. I know that seeing such little food and having someone tout it as their entire dinner can be triggering so I just want to be clear that I'm going to go and continue to veg after this. Like I just haven't laid it all out together but this is by no means everything that I'm eating tonight. In fact, why don't we take a look together at my options for more food. So we of course have some cherries, quite a few left though I'm pretty proud of my effort to work my way through those two massive bags so far. That's all that's left. And then we have some tofu back there. These are some overnight oats. This tuna fish is so tasty, though I think of it as more a lunch food. Some produce down in the lower shelves. Not much in the way of dinner food in there. And then in here, of course, we have pierogies. Lots of different kinds of popsicles. There's a frozen pizza right there. I don't know the technical difference between dumplings, pot stickers, gyoza. I don't know what the most correct term is. If you do, let me know. Maybe it depends on the kind. So, yeah, I think I know what I'm going to choose. I always have lots of pasta options. This cabinet seems messy, it's just packed to the gills, but it's pretty well organized, all things considered, you know, there are discernible sections. Also, look at this ugly chipped paint where there used to be a paper towel holder. Gotta fix that. Guess how many pierogies I'm currently making? Also, is pierogi like a, a stable plural? Someone let me know. Should I just refer to them as pierogi? Well, in any case, I'm making two. I made myself an extra large serving yesterday, so I had a couple stragglers in the box, and now I'm polishing them off. Very exciting over here. Very exciting Sunday night over here. I know, you're jealous. <laughs> what can I say? Get yourself some pierogies. Pierogi, pierogies, get yourself some of these delicious potato dumplings. And now it's time for some cantaloupe. I have to admit, it's not my favorite fruit. I don't really like melons as much, but we have some leftover and I don't want it to go to waste. So I'm going to try to enjoy it. Okay, that's it. So I'm just going to do a few odds and ends to wrap up my day before settling into a nice wind down evening. Um, so this is the last you'll see of me. I'm sure I'll record little bits here and there as I finish things up, but I did want to make sure to record myself saying goodbye to you properly. So thanks so much for following along with me this weekend. I hope you had a really nice one yourself, and thanks so much for watching.